It was very chilly this morning.
Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley, and hello, all people out there in interwebs land or whatever. <laughs> but if you're here, why don't you stand up and join us in singing the opening song, which everybody knows as Lean On Me. everyone. Good Welcome morning. to the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley. My name is Judy Chapman and I am the assistant minister here at the center. I am so delighted to see you all and to be back. I was gone for last weekend to celebrate my birthday up in Northern California with my daughter. Yay! Yay! But it feels, I was telling Reverend Alice this morning, it feels like I've been gone a month. And she said, but are you as relaxed as you would be for a month? I said, yes, <laughs> yes. So I turned uh, 75 years old. And Ooh. yes, and I'm trying to think of something wonderful to rhyme with that, like 75 still alive. No, I didn't <laughs> like that one. So I came up with 75 vibr vibrantly alive. So I like that one. Thank you. And thank you all for your, my birthday wishes. It made me feel so loved. So love. So whoever you are, whatever journey you're on, you're welcome here because we are a non-denominational center, could be called a trans-denominational center. It just could be called all-inclusive. So whoever you are, you're welcome here. Welcome home. And I'm so happy this morning. I'm seeing people we haven't seen uh, since beginning of 2020. So welcome back to your spiritual center. I'm so grateful you're here. Yes. So, and we have new people here this morning. It's great. It's a great day. So we're going to start this morning with the flames of faith. 
as we start every Sunday morning. It is a call to service. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all people, all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence that we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. And we light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Hans Smith lights that last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Please join me in consciousness. As I breathe in this wonderful air, this wonderful moment, I open myself to the divine mind, the divine consciousness that surrounds us each and every day, now and always. I know that I am part of this as each and every one of us here and each of and every one of us the world over are part of this one divine consciousness. And knowing that I am part of this one consciousness, I know that today's service unfolds in perfect right order, that each one of us hears what is needed to be heard, that each one of us speaks the words of truth to one another and into the consciousness itself receiving that blessing of power, that blessing of health, that blessing of knowing that all is well, all is perfect, all unfolds in divine right order. So as we sing and we speak and we listen today, we know that we are fed, that we are healthy, that we are loving, that we are compassionate and kind, and we spread our light, and we spread our joy throughout the world. I give great thanks for this service, for this teaching, for our teachers, for our ministers, for our practitioners, and for each precious soul in our congregation, and each precious soul the world over. So with a joyful and grateful heart, I release this treatment into the divine mind which knows it is so, and because it is so, we can all say together, and so it is. Ah. Okay, we're gonna say our, our, uh, our affirmation for today, and it's a good one. Are you ready? Here we go. 
My dreams are the stuff of spirit itself. Isn't who it is? Yes, it is. And now our Declaration of Principles. Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates on a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to create health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hans. And now it's my great joy to um, welcome our vocalist this morning. We've had her once before. We have her again. Donna Miller. Welcome, Donna Miller. Hi, it's good to be back. Thank you for having me back. All the colors of the rainbow, all the voices in the wind, every dream that we reaches out, reaches out to find where love begins. Every word of every story, every star in every sky, every corner of creation lives to testify. I shall live, I will testify to love. I'll be a witness in the silences when words are not enough. With every breath I take, I will give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. From the mountains to the valley. River to the sea, every hand that reaches out, every hand that reaches out to offer peace, every simple act of mercy, every step to kingdom come, all the hope in every heart will speak what love. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. I'll be a witness in the silences when words are not enough. With every breath I take, I will give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify. I will testify to love. God above, for as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. Be witness in the silences when words are not enough. With every breath I take, I will give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify. I will testify to love. Donna Thank Elaine you. Miller. That, that was beautiful. Oh, I, I think we're done here. <laughs> I will testify to love as long as I shall live. 
yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm all in, Donna. Thank you. Thank you for that so much. I was so lifted by your music. Good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm the spiritual leader here, and I'm really happy to be with you this morning. We are um, part of a global movement called Centers for Spiritual Living, and our uh, community here is the Center for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley. And for those of you who are new to our community, um, I am pretty new. <laughs> I have been here for um, not quite six weeks, and uh, I'm still settling in. I um, was so excited yesterday, I actually started to, actually in the middle of the week, I started unpacking some books in my office, and I got to unpack some of my books at home. I, um, I have a little problem with books. <laughs> I, let's see, I moved to the West Coast four years ago with a thousand books. And then I moved here in th almost four years with 1,200 books. So <laughs> I think it might be time to let some of them go and put them back into circulation. I don't think I have enough storage anymore for all the books. But I love my books because they, there's so much um, power in the written word. In the, there, and there are so many amazing books that have been written over the last 25 or 30 years, I would say that in my, um, in my spiritual journey, as I have opened up, I have noticed that culturally our world has opened up to the idea of spirituality, to this thing that's beyond traditional religion, but really an opportunity to live those uh, beautiful tenets that the religion has given us and to really bring them into practical application. And so what I will tell you is that when I first came to a Center for Spiritual Living, what I found was that all those beautiful ideas that I subscribed to as the different religions that I had explored were given practical application in this philosophy. And so I was really grateful to be able to not only think beautiful thoughts, but begin to learn how to take beautiful actions in my life and begin to really incorporate those ideas in my world. And when I did that, when I moved beyond the idea into incorporating the action and beginning to let it inform my thinking, my life changed. And I bet for those of you that have been around the block a couple of times with this philosophy, you could easily say the same thing. Uh, as a global movement, we have a beautiful collaborative process where we come up with annual themes and monthly topics. And the annual theme this year is Ancient Wisdom Evolutionary Vision. And so all year we've been looking at what that evolutionary vision is. And Dare I say that as we are moving about in this world and following the news and all the things that are happening in our world, certainly something has to be evolving. You might think devolving at some times. <laughs> but I, um, one of the books that I came across uh, that I really love that felt very natural to the topic that we have for today um, is a book by Margaret Wheatley. Anybody familiar with Margaret Wheatley's work? She's, uh, she's written a book called Who Do We Choose to Be? And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what Margaret has shared with us in this book. So our monthly topic is going further together. And there's a wonderful African proverb that says that alone we can go faster, but together, we can go further. And so last week, we talked a little bit about the synergy of being in community and b working with people to, uh, to collaborate, to, to share ideas, to take action together, to be in service together. And so this week, the topic, um, the topic for the week is share the dream. Share the dream. 
And in all honesty, I don't know that I really resonated with that title and the topic, the, the outlines and the ideas and the quotes that the group had come up with as I looked at it. I think that what feels more resonant to me is share the vision. Because I often think of a dream as something out there, something that is beyond my reach or my touch or my grasp. But what I know about a vision is a vision is something that I live into. And so this idea of shared vision, thank you, Mary. Wow, you're good, girl. <laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> um, the idea of a shared vision is really what I want to look at today. Um, and I think that Centers for Spiritual Living has this amazing vision, and you hear me talk about it all the time. It's uh, creating a world that works for everyone. Creating a world that works for everyone. And it is a vision that we have held as a movement for a long time. And if it's the first time you're hearing it, it might sound a little fluffy to you, <laughs> right? What the heck does that mean? My partner and I have little debates about it all the time. <laughs> Like how do, hey, that's, that's such a lofty idea. How can we, how can you really even begin to touch that? Well, the idea of having a vision that is larger than us, that we want to live into, requires that we call upon something greater than ourselves that lives within us to move us forward in that direction. And so to have this shared vision of a world that works for everyone gives us an opportunity to begin to look at our own lives and to look at the ways that we're walking things out into the world to see what's in alignment with that vision and what isn't. And as we come together in a community, that gives us an opportunity to begin to share ideas and to begin to uh, collaborate, to have dialogue, to see which part of the vision each one of us is holding for a world that works for everyone. And it invites us to think outside of our current precepts, our current perceptions. And so as I um, pulled Margaret Wheatley out of the box she'd been taped securely into <laughs> when I moved and I began to look at this book and the ideas that she shares, I was recalling this the theme that runs through this book, Who Do We Choose to Be?, where she was talking about how cultures and civilizations are formed, they rise up, and they fall. Formed, rise up, and they fall. And she talked about the fact that we've been through, uh, globally, um, six iterations of that cycle. And that our culture, as we know it, seems to be on the dissolving part of that process. And so she has this really inviting question. Who do we choose to be? I would venture to say, I'm going to take a risk here. <laughs> I would venture to say that never before in the history of humankind have we been at such a choice point? Have we been evolved enough to know that we can consciously choose who we want to be? That as systems and cultures begin to shift and evolve and change and dissolve, if you will, that we have an opportunity to consciously choose who we want to be. And Margaret has a little bit of a formula for that. And it's not pretty. <laughs> it's actually the first time I read this book, it caused me to take a couple of deep breaths <laughs> because she talked about the importance of facing reality, really looking at what it is that we've created, looking at the choices that underlie that what we've created, and then beginning to um, look at our part in that, and once we can face reality, then it's time for us, as she says, to claim our leadership. And so you may not think of yourself as a leader, but you are. 
In some way you are. Do you make choices, you take actions, and you influence other people. You influence people by the actions you take. You influence people by the choices you make. You influence people by the way you live. And so she says that once we face reality, then it's time for us to really claim leadership. And so I'll recast that to say we claim ownership. We claim ownership and the responsibility that we have for who we are in the world and how we walk out life. Take a breath, because <laughs> that's a big idea, <laughs> to take ownership for the life that we've created. There's a great chapter in this book where Margaret talks about perception. And I love this quote from a, gen a geneticist, and I want to share it with you somewhere in my notes. He says that, First, the, the statement that Margaret writes is that perceptions create a reality. And so Richard Lewinett shares and says, organisms do not experience their environment, they create them. And I love that a scientist has made that statement, that organisms don't experience their environment, they create them. So here we have science that is reflecting back the same perception, the same philosophy that we live out in the world. And through this philosophy that we know that thoughts create a reality. Just go into any family gathering and begin to talk about some topic that is up in the world and look at all the different realities that show up, right? I mean, I have people that I love and hold dear, and their reality is completely different from mine. Because I have a different perception than they do. And so I'm, Margaret really talks about the power of perception and how it's important for us to begin to look at our perceptions if we're going to share a vision. If we're going to really walk out a big vision, we have to understand what our perceptions are, and we need to take ownership for them and then begin to align our actions with them. And she tells this great story about a woman, Stephanie Marshall, who was the president of a school that was specifically designed for talented youth in math and science. And it was the first three-year residential school in the country. And the motto of that school was really to begin to open up and discover the goodness and genius in all students. What a lovely idea that you're the first premise you have when you meet a child and bring them into this learning environment is that they're already full of goodness and genius and it just needs to be revealed. Does it sound familiar? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's what we teach. We teach that there's wholeness within us already and that we just reveal that in whatever area we focus on. And so, the story that Margaret tells about Stephanie in this school is that one year in August, the director of admissions came to her very upset because apparently they had given out 35 more admission letters than they had space for accidentally. They did not have the beds, they did not have the food ordered, they did not have the books ordered. And the director of admissions immediately wanted to send a letter out to these students and say, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. But it was August, and so Stephanie, being a true leader, looked to the vision and the mission of the school and said, no, we will find a way to accommodate them. Now, you can imagine the staff's reaction to this. <laughs> it was, there were a lot of high emotions in that, in that um, institution. And so Stephanie did something that I think is pretty unorthodox, maybe even bordering on, um, oh, how do I say, um, unscrupulous. It seemed unscrupulous on the surface, but I'm going to give Stephanie a pass because she had 30 days to get the ship righted and make sure that they could have um, room for these 35 students. So she asked her executive assistant to take note of the dialogues in the faculty room and in the staff, 
you might think it was kind of like spying. But I don't think she was spying. I think she was trying to take the temperature of the culture. So she made sure that her assistant did not tell her who said what. And as she looked at what people were saying and how they were feeling, she found two distinct storylines bubbling up in the culture of that institution. One was this effervescent excitement about welcoming these new students, knowing there'd be grateful parents and that it would all work out. And the other storyline was not quite as lovely. There were people who were blaming Stephanie and even pulling up some of her past ideas and mistakes that she'd made. And so she, she labeled these two storylines, the gift and the fire. The gift and the firestorm. And so she brought the staff and all the institutional employees together and she shared with them these two storylines, and she said this to them, which I thought was, was really provocative. She said, usually we don't know the competing stories, and we just keep doing what we've been doing. Locked into our familiar narrative, now you see the two stories. Now you see the two stories. It's time for you to choose. A perfect example of what Margaret Wheatley talks about in the importance of beginning to look at the narrative you're living from and to face the reality and then to open your perspective so that you can begin to see the other narratives that are around you in the communities that you find yourself in. And then choosing. Choosing what you want to experience. Choosing who you want to be. Because you can do that. You may not have any control over anything in your life. You may have that experience from time to time. I know that I have felt that way from time to time. But the one thing I always have control over is how I move through that, how I navigate the waters. We were, we were talking about um, astrology the other day, and, and I said, I, I like astrology, not because I use it to predict things, but because it tells me the weather forecast of what's going on, and then I get to decide how I want to navigate that. And so when we look at this idea of this choosing who we want to be, this story is beautiful as it gives us this opportunity to look at the, our own places where there may be multiple narratives. I don't know, is anybody having that experience? Anywhere in your life, in the world, in the news, politics? over life choices, over various laws that are coming up for, for consideration of being changed. I mean, we, there's a lot of narratives out there. Now, my, now, in our story, I think Stephanie had an agenda, didn't she? <laughs> she needed to meet the needs of these 35 families that were coming into her community, and so she was a little heavy-handed in prescribing these, you know, the gift or the firestorm. But it was an opportunity for people to rise up and to see past their um, objections, to see past the, their perceived limitations, to broaden their perspective so that they could, again, align themselves with the shared vision of that institution. This community has been around for 53 years, I think. Yep, did I get that right? Yep, 53 years. And in the 53 years, there have been some wonderful iterations. Been, you've had different spiritual leaders. You've had different community members. And here we are at the, God, I hope, tail end <laughs> of the pandemic and this thing called COVID. And we have an opportunity to do something similar. We have an opportunity to look at who we choose to be. Who do we choose to be as a community? Who do we choose to be as individuals? Who do we choose to be when we're interacting with each other? I have seen some 
I'm, and I'm beginning to, I'm starting to have meetings with some of you, and I'm beginning to get to know many of you, and, and I'm really seeing some wonderful shared values, shared values for love, fair sh shared values for community, shared values for inclusiveness, and I think that as I get grounded and we begin to do our work together, it'll be really powerful for us to come together in different groups, whether it's in our friendship circles or in our leadership groups or in our practitioner group, but to come together and to begin to explore what are those shared values that we want to focus on so that we can share a vision and walk it out together with some cohesiveness and that our individual visions and our community vision can be aligned with that global vision of a world that works for everyone. It's a pathway, it's a journey. And I hope most of you wanna join me for this journey. I hope most of you are excited about the idea of exploring what it is that we wanna be as a community and an individual as we come together. There's a, um, Great, great quote. I bet you've heard it before if you've been here uh, for a little while. Ernest Holmes, who was our founder, um, uh, in addition to saying that we're open at the top and greater things than I know you shall know. I think that was Jesus, but actually... <laughs> Ernest Holmes said it a little differently. He was a synthesizer of information. He was not an authority, and he wanted us to grow past... Um, the philosophy that he presented. But he, so at his last talk at our conference that we have affectionately known as the Silomar, he did a talk called the Sermon by the Sea. And in that talk, he said, if we could find 1,000 people who were for something and against nothing, we could change the world. For something and against nothing. I think that's a pretty tall order. It requires me to be willing, to be curious, to look at the things that I am definitely not down with, to look at the places in the world that I am completely resisting, to find what I have in common with people who have different perceptions than me, and find that common ground. And, and as I've said before, I really believe that the common ground that we all have is a sense of shared values. And then when we begin to discover them, that those are the things that we can walk out. Now, I know most of you are familiar with our declarations of principles, but are you familiar with our global values? Has anybody shared them with you? So as a movement, we have some Shared values, they are accountability, financial health and prosperity, integrity, love, which gets demonstrated through community service, safety, compassion and caring, and spiritual living, which we also demonstrate through diversity and inclusion, education, transformation and evolution, creativity and continuous improvement. Well, those are some really beautiful values, and I have a feeling that it, there isn't a person in this room who wouldn't, doesn't share an appreciation for these values. The question then becomes, wh what are the values that are most important to us? And where do we want to take action as a community? And where do we want to take action as individuals? And when we answer those questions, we'll have a shared vision as a community. It'll be our vision. We'll, we'll walk it out together. And because, as that African proverb says so beautifully, while we could go faster alone, we'll go further together. So my invitation to you is to begin to look at the values that are important to you, to maybe include that and fold that into your spiritual practice to begin to look at the things that are important to you as a community member and as an individual. So that not only can we help you 
as community members who support each other, not only can we help you create a world that works for you, but we can help you create a world that works for everyone. Thank you very much. So in the resonance, the resonance of that opportunity that we've had to explore ideas, I know that we come together in this place where we allow ourselves to simply surrender to the oneness, the oneness of love, the oneness of power, the oneness of beauty, the oneness of compassion. And for each one, I know that we are divinely supported, that whatever reality it is that we need to face, we face it with courage. That any fear that comes up, we simply allow it to bubble up so that we can know what's behind it. And that we can allow it to dissipate and be dissolved by our faith, our faith in spirit and that universal power that is forever demonstrating itself by means of each one of us. So I know in this moment as I speak this word that each one is in the right place at the right time, that whatever is coming up for you is an opportunity, an opportunity for greater release, an opportunity for greater expression. And I trust, I trust that we are together creating a world that works for everyone and that indeed the world works for each one of us. And I give great thanks for the willingness and the opportunity and the, the powerfulness of our collective consciousness that comes together to say yes and yes and yes again to greater good. I give great thanks for this. And together we anchor this in love by saying, and so it is. And now I'd like to invite Donna to come back up and give us some beautiful music. Come on tiptoe Love is where it starts It resides Often hides Deep within our hearts And just as Pebbles make a mountain Raindrops make a sea One day at a time Change begins with you and me. Ordinary miracles happen all around just by giving and receiving comes belonging and believing. Every sun that never rose before each new day leads the way to a different door and we can all be quiet heroes living quiet days walking through the world changing it in quiet ways dark each and every one of us lights a spark and the walls can tumble and the mountains can move the wind and the tide can turn yes ordinary miracles Clap of thunder, 
only joy and quiet wonder endless possibilities right before our eyes see the way a miracle multiplies yes hope can spring eternally in its extraordinary way makes ordinary miracles every blessed day Donna Elaine Miller. Now that's beautiful. Yes, every day is a miracle, and there's thousands of miracles in every day for sure. Ah, mm, what a great day. Okay, it's time for our offertory. And I just want to let you know that the baskets are at each door. Uh, for your donation uh, and at the back of the room and um, we are solely and totally supported this center by your contributions your tithe and your love so thank you for giving and receiving so let us uh, take our offering and place it in our hands and place it on our heart and we can say our offering together my offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply, and it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Hmm. Yes, it does. So I have a piece that I'd like to offer. This is our chance of offering back to you, our beautiful congregation, and I have a squeaky voice today, so it's going to be an instrumental. <laughs> Featuring our beautiful band, it's a piece by Eric Satie.
so beautiful. Thank you so much. I believe it was a Meister Eckhart that said, if thank you was the only prayer that you ever said, it would suffice. So I want to say thank you. Thank you to Diane King Van for your beautiful music in your direction. She's our music director and choir director. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Dave Page, our beautiful band, Bill Dixon, Ed Cuspy. We are so blessed to have our fabulous musicians. And today's guest vocalist, thank you, Donna Miller. Your just beautiful voice. Beautiful. In the back of the room, we have Mary Brogdon on our computer. And we have Dave Friedman and Clark Wilson on the cameras. And Josh Schreiber on the sound booth. Yay, thank you so much. And we have our song leaders, Kimberly and Wade Wildridge, and um, also will be giving us invitations here in a moment. Our practitioners today are Hans Smith, Cheryl Lyman, and Patrick Freeman. They're available to you for a short um, session with them, if you so choose. If you're having a bump in the road, as we all do, because that's what life is, life is an up and down experience, uh, they can see through your circumstance, your situation, to the truth of the being of who you are. And what is that? We are spiritual beings. First and foremost, can't be more spiritual, as spiritual as you'll ever be in this moment. So. Realize that and recognize that and go to a practitioner and let them see that for you and see your truth. So there'll be two at the back tables, one in the tranquility room for you. And now let's have some invitations from Wade and Kimberly. A word to the wise is sufficient. Talk is cheap. Hold fast to the words of your ancestors. Wise men make proverbs and fools repeat them. <coughs> Birds of a feather flock together. So you are invited to attend Conscious Connection right here in the room after the service from 12 to 12.30. Get together with Mary and friends for a brief discussion about today's topic. Don't judge a book by its cover. You know, beginning on Wednesday, October 13th, our book study with Mary is discussing a new book series, The Conversations with God Trilogy. Please see your weekly email for the Zoom link. Money is a good servant, but a bad master. You are invited to sign up for the first class Reverend Alice is facilitating as the new spiritual director, Principles of Financial Freedom. The eight-week course will help you identify blocks and old ideas that may have been holding you back from having a true spiritual experience with your finances. There will be two of the same classes offered during the week. Give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. The in-person class will start on October 19th and be held on subsequent Tuesday mornings at 10.30 a.m. And the online Zoom class will start on October October the 20th and be held on subsequent Wednesday evenings at 6.30. Better late than never. You have to spend money to make money, so sign up for one of these classes on the kiosk or on our website. The great part of having these two options is that you may attend the other class if you have a scheduling conflict with, one of the, uh, in the, with the one in which you signed up. That's easy for you to say. The cost of the class is $200 or $180 if paid in full by the first class. The best things in life are free. And scholarships are available for those who need financial assistance for the class. For more information, or if you have any questions about the class, see Reverend Alice. Money, like manure, does no good until it is spread. <laughs> Beginning on October 24th, our Committed Giving campaign commences. During this time, we will dig deeper into our spiritual practices through workshops and other activities throughout the month. More details to follow. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But then, on the other hand, you're never too old to learn. Shifting Sands continues to meet on Thursday mornings from 10.30 to 12.30 on Zoom, as does Coming Home, Awakening to Spirit, on Friday mornings at 8 a.m. These links are also available on your weekly email. 
You gotta stop and smell the roses. Today's flowers are from Rose Tingle to recognize the 13th anniversary of the Animal Kinship Ministry and to bless the animals in honor of St. Francis. Money can buy you a fine dog, but only love can make him wag his tail. Rose likes to think of each flower representing the affirmation stated in a Science of Mind page she read five years ago. It goes, today, I remember that all of life is sacred, regardless of how many legs, wings, or fins it has. I am one with it all, and we are one in God. It is all good. And so she has invited anyone who would like to take a rose home after the service to do so. So thank you for the rose, Rose. <laughs> Music is the universal language of mankind, so please join us in singing the closing song. together and feel all right. One love, one heart, give thanks and praise to God and I will feel all right. Let's get together and feel all right. One love, one heart, let's get together and So knowing that indeed we are one love, one life, one human family, moving through this existence, holding each other up, I know that as we move through this week, we continue to keep our hearts open, to continue to move forward consciously in greater alignment with all things that we value. I give great thanks for this morning. I give great thanks for our week ahead, I know that everything is unfolding in perfect and divine order, and I, get, and I simply say thank you, and so it is. And so it is. Mm -hmm.